Hi everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Back to the Future of the Game, Episode 5. The story so far. Back in 1931, Marty has faced down a rebellious citizen Brown and restored young Emmett to the path of science. If it weren't for the pesky business of Grandpa Artie marrying the wrong woman, you might conclude that Hills Valley timeline was perfectly in order. Oh, except for the fact that Edna Strickland just hijacked the DeLorean, jumped to another time, and somehow caused the city itself to disappear. In place of their hometown, Doc and Marty find just one tumble-down shack. In the shack, a slightly cracked version of old Edna Strickland. Under Doc's hypnotic spell, the old crone is reliving the momentous events of her past. If they are to learn the when and the how of Hill Valley's disappearance, Marty C needs to see to it that she stays in the past. And the last thing she mentioned was that Beauregard Tannen was about to build something of evil and pointed toward the outhouse. Which kind of makes sense, an outhouse could be considered evil, but the one thing you would think that Beauregard Tannen would put up would be a saloon. Talk about a watering hole. A <laughs> saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... Conclusive. Well, and you know how she deals with problems. I wonder what's cooking. And we can grab the stick. And we're not going to shove the stick in our pants, so let's start burning no, the house. No, you're doing it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. And she's still creepy with her. Arson. Beautiful. The devil. Pyromania. And consumed by the fires of righteousness. <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. <laughs> oh. What is it then? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> oh, the irony. Well, I lay it on too thick. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story. Am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months' worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. Ah, <sighs> Artie's great grandfather, full of awesome. Now 
There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. Yeah, we could try going through the front. <laughs> I but, better not get too close. Yeah, we don't really... Well, I mean, we can walk right up to him. We're not going to wake him up or anything. But... We got pickle barrels. I better not get too. And we close. can't actually go in that way, so we need to creak a floorboard as we try to walk up, and then see this. Who's there? Edna, stop! It's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! You shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? <laughs> well, let's see what we've got to work with. Maybe I could jump him. No. If I don't figure out some way of dousing that flame, Edna's gonna burn down the town. Cripes, it's no wonder the town went up. I can smell the kerosene from here. Yeah. She was not kidding. Chandeliers right over their heads. That's got to be useful somehow. Indeed it does. I got to find some way to snuff out Edna's torch without getting her and Doc killed. Yep. And the only thing we have to work with from behind here... Oh, where is that? Is this little floorboard. Which that nudges mouse? that little... What's the matter, Miss Pickford? Scared of a little mouse? No, but you should be scared. Mice carry diseases. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh, we haven't Why heard her say so that in a while. you so determined to meddle in my affairs, woman? You've been a-burring my behind for over a month now. You're the source of the hellfire around here, Tannen. I'm just fanning the flames a little. Lady. And we could listen to them argue some more. But first, we need to look at this pickle barrel. Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. Yes, indeed. It's too heavy to lift. Yeah. We can't lift it up, but we need to take I a look at these needs. barrels. Oh, stop quiet. God. What the hell? Oh, cow crap. There goes all my pickled pig's feet. Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting it's... out torches. It's too heavy to Still lift. Still can't quite get it up there. So we've got to figure out how to get it, how to use this to get it up there. And we've got a ladder and a sandbag. Man, this thing is not light. Nope, and we're not going to be carrying it anywhere. We can't go any further here. There's nowhere out front for us to go, so let's go now. up. So, if you can't tell, this little pallet here, if you... <laughs> heavy. Yeah, heavy. Literally. If you can't tell, this pallet here's rope is connected to the rope, uh, is connected to the pallet with the pickle juice on it. So, if we could manage to weigh this down, we might, just might, be able to get that pickle juice up here. Are you here to haul me back to 1931 for my supposed crimes? Or is there some sort of time court for that kind of thing? Time court? What in the name of Ulysses S. Grant is she talking about? Ah, uh, so first, let's grab some sandbags and try to weigh down that particular... Oops. It's right over his head, but I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. No, we can't. And we're not going to. Mm. 
But we are going to take <laughs> these sandbags. All of them. <laughs> and throw them on this <laughs> pallet. <laughs> But it's still not heavy enough to move the, uh, move the pickle juice up. But if we stand Going on down. the pallet, we now outweigh the pickle Looks barrel. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gamora, Tannen. What kind of odds would you give me that I can disarm you and douse the young lady's torch simultaneously? About the same odds that you can walk out of here without getting a shot to the gut, stranger. So we will grab this last sandbag and put it on the pallet so that it stays down here. All right, physics. And now we are done with that. However, the pickle barrel is still pretty solidly stuck on that cart. Let's yank a rope. <laughs> And unfortunately, it's now stuck on that pillar up there. So, don't tell me that you're not traveling through time under a pseudonym, Mr. Yeah. So, we hit the loose floorboard now that we know that what it does, and it allows the pickle barrel to jump and okay. land on the that other side of that. Now. We'll just see. So, now are we going to set off this little course of events? Come on, I want to see the ladder. Now that everything is in place, the pickle barrel above her, the sandbag hey, above him. Chandelier you've got there, Tannen. Is it French? Come on. Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... <gasps> One... Ha! Two... Like a frog! Who the hell are you? I'm the diversion, butthead. And Doc lays him out with one punch. Nice one, Bingo. Doc! Bingo! Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fisticuffs set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits any mile per hour. Come on. And now we are in the Nothing home stretch of You're the a game. Smart woman, with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! What's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she'll manage to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we gonna stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate itself put all over her DeLorean and have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux synchronization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes. We might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Lord's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to link both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate DeLorean. At least that's the theory, anyway. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. Snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Let me think. Aha! A hoverboard! It saved our hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet! <laughs> You okay? It's just like riding a bike. You ready to make the jump? 
ready, Doc. One, two, three, jump! Whoa. Nice form, buddy. Out of reception on the wireless. This is great. Where'd you get these? Confirmed cash for 21st century video game consoles. Now remember, all you've got to do is attach the functioning modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. And now, we are literally in the last bit of the game. It's a good time to stop the video, so when we return, we will shut down Edna's DeLorean. Till then, take care folks. See you later.